Hello everyone, welcome to another video. You asked for it, so here it is. Part two of Tool Time. We've got a lot of different experts in this week, so it's gonna be a good one. Steve, hopefully, Dean, uh, whoever's in, I'll catch them. I think that's Dean I can see down there. Let's try and catch him first. Repair Shop's very own shoemaker and leather expert. He's got the most beautiful selection of tools. They're, they're beautifully arranged, they're always pristine, and quite a lot of them are in the new book, actually, because you just would have no idea what they're for. And I think Dean's tools, more than anybody else here, are so specific to his job. He's got a pair of pliers that are, they've got like a hammer on one side. Uh, I can't remember what the name of those is. I should know that because they are in the book, but they were from Dean. Um, so I'm so glad we've got a couple of seconds here to chat to Dean and find out what his favorite tool is. And maybe I'll ask him a festive question as well. It's Christmas after all. Hello, how are we doing? I'm Dean Westmoreland, the shoemaker down at the repair shop. I've also got my own business. Been in the trade about 16 years. Love shoemaking, love leather work. Now, Dean, what is your favorite tool? If you had to choose one, and I know you've got quite a few. Oh man, it's so difficult, so, so difficult. I think probably this, this lip iron, this was uh, given to me. I've had a lot of tools gifted. I've been very, very lucky over the past few years. Old shoemakers, old repairers have gifted me a lot of tools. This is an old lip iron that was made in Sheffield. God knows when. Um, and I use this, so when I've sold a boot, this hasn't got a sole on yet, this is your boot. These are mine, that's actually my boot, boot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to be ready soon. Um, when all that's trimmed, you, you end up with like a, a lot of leather on the top end and on the bottom end if you're doing a leather sole. And what this does is, you can use it cold or warm, you can heat it up and it'll just iron that edge out and just give a really uniform, nice profile to it. I see, so it sort of seals the edge of the cut leather. Seals it and it, it flattens everything. So you've got a beautiful line all the way along and that'll run around the heel when you've got a heel block as well. Yeah. Um, it's really, really subtle. I would notice if I didn't do it. And it's these little subtle things, these micro details that I, I love about these tools. This would develop just for this. Would, would anybody else be able to use that tool? I can't see why or how anybody would use this. Anybody um, else? No. You probably find a use for it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Very specific, and there's all different mm. types of lip irons and different depths. Why do you think that's your favourite one? Out of all of the ones you've got, is it just because it's old? It's because it's old. Because it just feels right in my hand. You kind of get used to your tools. You'll know this, Tom. Uh, they become one with you, if yeah. you like. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just use it so much. And I think when I've not had it or I've forgot it. It's like the last thing to finish the job. And if I don't have it, I get really frustrated. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted to buy yourself a new tool for Christmas, what would you buy? It would be a knife, another knife. I've got hundreds of knives and I'm always after that one that, that will skive right or cut right or just hold its edge right. And I'm always on the quest for new knives, old knives that I can resharpen. Really like, like me with hammers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hundreds of knives, hundreds of hammers. Yeah, never got enough of them. Do you have to sharpen that or does it wear out? Not really. I mean, I think this is maybe 50, 60, 70 years old. Uh, I've got things from the before the 1900s that you've kind of had to re-edge with a, a jewellery file or something like that. But no, these keep the edge pretty well and the steel's of such quality that you don't really need to re-edge things. Can you buy new ones? You can buy new ones. In my opinion, the new ones I've had are not of the same quality and I just think old is gold. It's always the case with it, machinery tools anything in our craft is our oldest gold well there you go if you, anybody out there ever finds any of these in a boot sale or somewhere and nobody knows what it is buy them and tell dean you've got them <laughs> Whew, it's freezing cold look how nice that looks though lucia as you may well have guessed i have found the lovely lucia mm -hmm. I know you already know who this lovely lady is, but let's get an introduction first. Hi, I'm Lucia. I'm a conservator of paintings and I work here with Dom and a load of other people at the repair shop. It's always great fun. We work very hard today. It's actually zero freezing right now. And it has been all day. Well, the frost from this morning yeah. has not gone <laughs> all day. Yeah, yeah, so we're absolutely bundled up with all sorts of things to keep us warm. You've been coming to the repair shop for, well, since the beginning. Yeah. 2016 when you're packing your car to come down and you're getting you're going for your studio and you're putting bits in your box to bring down here what is your favorite tool that one thing that you bring with you every time and you'd be lost without 
my dental tool. I've had this since I was a student and I couldn't tell you where I got it from, I don't know. I've got actually four of them but this is the only one that I use and it's proven to be absolutely fantastic, this end of it, for actually filling losses and um, it's just perfect. Oh, I it's thought good. you'd bring a paintbrush. Oh, did you? Paintbrushes are fairly obvious, as is my uh, heated spatula. Yeah. That usually goes everywhere with me. But this is, they're replaceable. If I lost this, that would be it. Is that something you can't buy can't anymore? Can't buy. Now it's so worn and there's a real little, it's quite hard, but there's a bit of flexibility in the end of it. It's, it's absolutely perfect. And I take it everywhere with me. It's been around the world on all sorts of different jobs and I would hate to lose it. But That's amazing. The amount of magical amazing paintings and carriages and yeah things that that has touched the, yeah this gets in on everything but it, it is irreplaceable it really is uh, whereas all my other equipment isn't although i do tend to keep things an awful long time it's beautifully weighted and it just does the job in a way that none of the ones that you buy that are ready made filling tools they're just not the same as the, this. so you've made that special by wear and tear over the yeah, years it's yeah. it's worn to your hand it has it has and i, I dread the day it goes but uh, yeah so it's been with me an awful long time so that's it that's my favorite tool out of everything in my toolbox i try to be good and buy things that were made specifically for filling paintings filling losses in paintings i've still got them they're rubbish as this is a festive special so we're so close to christmas i've got one more question if you had to buy yourself one tool what would it be this year there okay. must be something that you need actually there is and i was going to say the ranola because i thought that'd be quite amusing uh, but then i realized what i want is one i call it my magic screwdriver and it's one of those screwdrivers that has slots out and you turn it round and you've got a, a cross screw on oh with it. all the different bits in the end yeah ah somebody mine got stolen you're kidding yeah and again it was just a great one it wasn't particularly expensive um but yeah it so the one that they look like a normal screwdriver but the end of the handle comes off and they've got all the different bits in the end of it no literally literally the handle came off and you turned it round one way and then the other it was quite simple um, that's just slotted one in flat slotted, and yeah. stuck phillips on the other yeah that that was that was it's the simple things simple things that's all a girl needs oh i've come into my little cupboard because it's so cold outside the lovely lucia oh she's absolutely brilliant I was, I swear she was going to pick a paintbrush. She has got the most amazing collection of paintbrushes. I can't believe she chose a little old dentist tool. And again, every single person so far has picked something old, an old tool that they've had for years or someone's handed down to them. It's so funny. Next up, I'm going to try and get hold of Steve Fletcher. I know he's a fan favorite with all of you. Um, and he has got almost as many tools as I've got down here. So I've got a funny feeling he's also going to pick something old. I don't know what it's going to be though. I've got him. I found him. It's taken me all week and now it's the last thing on a Friday. I was like, Steve, you can't go. Quick, let me just chat very quickly. Resident horologist and well, amongst other yeah, skills. I, I, I sort of started off being the resident <laughs> horologist, um, but then I started repairing other things or said I could start repairing other things. And all of a sudden I get all sorts of things, yeah. which I love, especially when it's a challenge and it's unusual things. Uh, he's just in, he wants to take I'm just coming out, yeah. Sorry, Steve. <coughs> he's gone, he's been called away. They left me here waiting. It, it's so busy here all the time. I'm sure we'll be back soon. Stay tuned. Now the front of your bench is, has become quite a sort of statement part of the barn that you've got quite the collection of hammers and pliers and, and tweezers and Yep. files yep. you've got a lot of tools yeah it's where everyone comes to borrow tools exactly <laughs> <laughs> i'm guilty of that myself <laughs> but um, what is your favorite tool out of all of them and why but you know what that was a really easy um question to answer it easy yeah. really yeah no i find it very very easy and, and it's it's just a little simple screwdriver and it's a ratchet screwdriver and it it just works and it feels great in the hand and you can just twist it like that or you, you press the, the little uh, lever there and and so it'll go the other way as well it belonged to my grandfather so it, it's really very very special to me uh, it, it, it is something that I don't think about it all the time but occasionally I just take it and I think yeah my grandfather held that the same way and liked it for the same reason that I do so um, yeah he was a horologist as well he was a, a clock and watch maker and he used to repair all sorts of things as well. I mean, he used to 
uh, repair church organs. He 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 would um, have accumulators um, that he used to rent out to people. He was a very inventive, very very inventive chap. Amazing. Do you have a lot of your tools there from your grandfather, or is that really it? Um, th th there are a few more, um, and 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 a few of my father's as well. Um, so, uh, and I hope to sort of hand that on to um, either uh, one of my children or grandchildren, and and I hope they think the same way about it that I do. Brilliant. I thought you'd pick one of your laves. You've got the most beautiful watchmaker's oh, lathe. It is. It's a cracking lathe. I like that lathe so much. Um, You're very that, protective over it. I will say that. Yeah, well, that, that was my dad's, um, and uh, it it is such good quality, and it works, and and it just feels right. And when yeah. a, when a tool feels right, it is right. And that's uh, that's why I love tools. Um, the simplest of tools are some of the greatest of tools, and uh, and amazing inventions as well. Yeah, like that screwdriver. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Well, as this is a Christmas special, yeah. this Christmas, if you there must be something on your shopping list at all that you don't have yeah. that you would like. Uh, that's easy. As What's well. it going to be? Because uh, the flavour of the moment is, um, the, and I've seen um, uh, Richard uh, Talman using one in here, and it's a laser welder. Oh, you're kidding! Uh, yes, I want one. Do you know when you want something so badly um, that that you just you look on the internet all the time and read about it, and and you just try and find out everything there is to know about yeah. it. And and you you get excited like you were when you were a kid waiting for your, your Christmas present or birthday present to come along. You're doing what I do. You're convincing yourself that you need this tool. <laughs> what I do? <laughs> I'm honest, I do. <laughs> You've convinced yourself already. <laughs> I have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The repair shop is down the end there. Um, at the top of the museum on the way in is this beautiful shop. They've got so many little bits and bobs, things made by local craftspeople. There's this gorgeous lake up here, which the other day it was frozen. It's so cold here. I think it's literally minus two now. Finally, after how many weeks of trying to get a hold of him, he's actually available for a couple of minutes. Will Kirk is here. I'll tell you what is cold, this steel. This <laughs> is my favorite chisel. Um, it's my widest, my heaviest chisel. It almost needs its own toolbox. I've got loads of chisels, but this is probably my favorite because it kind of, the fact that it's so weighty and it's so wide, it almost acts like a plane, so you can pair off wood, you can hack into anything. I think it's uh, Sheffield steel, it's very old. Uh, it keeps a sharp edge. Uh, and yeah, it's my favorite tool. Where did you get it? I bought this from a market, actually. Um, my in-laws lived in Bath. And I know that on weekends they have like a local market, you can get bits and bobs from there. And there's a guy selling really old tools. I got this for a tenner. No. Ten pounds. Really? Yeah. Um, he had some other chisels and things, but when my eyes uh, saw this, it was love at first sight. Yeah, I bet. For a tenner, I mean, that will outlive both of us, I'm sure, if you look after exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, it does keep a really good edge. Uh, it takes a long time to sharpen it, but it gets the job done. Which tool would you want to buy yourself for Christmas? Which tool? I know what, a uh, chisel sharpening tool. Right. Yeah, because this takes so long to sharpen. <laughs> One of those nice whetstone, yeah, like those rotating lovely, things. Lovely whetstone wheel. Um, I remember my first day, day at university, actually no, my first week at uni was just on sharpening tools because sharp tool, you're gonna get the job done properly, right? But it takes so long to do. It's kind of like sanding, I find it very boring, but it needs to be done. So maybe a water stone. Yeah. It's nice sharpen on my Christmas. List. It's always, yeah, perfect. Keeping your tools and your chisel sharp. When you do finally sharpen them, you think, man, why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah. It's <laughs> a massive, massive, massive difference. And yeah, you don't realize how blunt your tools are getting until you sharpen them. You think, wow, that's made a huge difference. Yeah. So sharp tools, tool sharpening system, or maybe even just someone to sharpen my tools for me. <laughs> yeah. would be great. Uh, Santa, I've been very good this year, so. Perfect. Please. <laughs> You know what? I knew Will was going to choose that chisel. If you watch the show, behind him he's got his sort of board of tools and that chisel is always up there, every single time. And he's packing up now uh, to go back for Christmas because this is our last week filming. And he's absolutely brought that chisel back with him. It goes everywhere with him. I remember the week that he got it in that fair. Uh, he was so chuffed, and rightly so. It is a beautiful thing. I've got to try and paint something now. I'm not sure how that's going to go in this freezing cold weather, but 
Wish me luck. <laughs> I better get the heaters on. It's actually officially the very last day of filming the repair shop this year. It's bitterly cold here, but we're going to miss each other. Yeah. But anyway, Definitely. enough of that. I've found the bears, I've got hold of them. Let's find out what their favourite tool is. We're the teddy bear ladies. I'm Amanda. And I'm Julie. You must go through the same process that we all go through. Yep. Do frantic laps around the workshop of like, what am I going to need this week? What yep. am I going to pack? What am I, what am I, I can't forget that. Okay. What is the one tool that, well each, you can have a yep. different one. Okay. That you could not do without. Well, I can never go anywhere without a good stuffing stick. A, a what? <laughs> <laughs> A good stuffing stick. If you've watched the programme for a while, you'll remember Ralph the Rhino. So, stuffing stick. Have I got to put that in here? You'd think they could have put the closing seams in there. All right, Ralph. I'm so sorry, this will hurt just a little bit. He um, was able to have a go with the stuffing stick and found it very satisfactory, but it is really good for getting into all those nooks and crannies where you can't reach with your fingers. If you is, like. is that a tool you've made? No, no, it's actually, we believe it's an upholstery tool. Ah. But it works so well with us, especially with our wood wall, because you can kind of twist and push, twist and push, and it compacts everything down. So it's absolutely brilliant and a vital bit of kit. This is really good when you've got a bigger bear and you want to get right down into his toes or down to the end of his nose, you know, and it just, your hands can't quite get there. This is your tool. It's a German tool made by a company called Athlet. And we've had this one years, actually, probably as long as we've been working together. So about 16 years, something like that. Yeah. So it's got a nice, you know when they get a nice feel? Absolutely, yeah. The handle starts, so you get that lovely patina on there and you know that it's yours. Julie, how about yourself? Nothing very exciting, but essential. Good, sharp scissors. You and your scissors. They disappear. Yeah, I am guilty of stealing they them. They wander off around the barn and get used to cut everything except what they're meant to be cut with. And you need to keep your scissors for what they're meant to be cut with. These ones are fabric and thread only. It's weird. Very strict rules with your scissors, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Very strict rules with our scissors. Cut paper, they're ruined. What would be on your Christmas list if you wanted to buy yourself a new tool uh -huh. this year? Uh -huh. Well, this is slightly... A welder? No. 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 <laughs> no. no, no, no. This is a bit of a twist, actually, mm. because if there is a Santa out there that can find these for us, we will be very, very happy. Okay. Yes. Are you ready? What you, Show him. What do you need? These. This is lovingly known as a mohair brush for brushing mohs. <laughs> No, it's not really. It's what <laughs> it's what Dom uses for his beard. Dom really loves to use these on his beard. I don't know why. It's really nice. It's very satisfying. And, yeah. yeah. There are plenty of others on the market similar. that are similar. But the problem is that these little metal bristles are rigid and really coarse and scratchy. These have got a softness to them. And we have been told that these little brushes are made up using carding yes what do the what card it's a carding brush for carding wool. wool yeah but there must be different grades of carding brushes because I say this one you can see I can squash it with my fingers but the only ones we can find now are really really cool too coarse it's almost like different secrets of sandpaper yes. or wire wool yes, or something absolutely. like that and, and we are down to our last one. And he's losing bristles. Oh no. There's hardly any bristles left. Oh, no. And it's, yeah. But where did you get that from? We've had this, again, this one we've had years. And we used to have a supplier for them, but But the no supplier more. can't get them either. Not unless they're these harder, scratchy ones. So that would be wonderful. There's a gap in the market there. You need to make your own. But anyway, if somebody knows where we can get these original softer ones Fine. that would be Santa, uh, that would make us really happy if santa's little elves yes definitely. do that for us there we go there's a challenge for you all out there if anybody knows where on earth the bears can get one of these brushes from who makes them what it's made of where we can get one please put a comment below and let us know thank you so much and thank you bears well, there we go. The end of another video and the end of another year filming here at the repair shop. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Little insight into what goes on in all of our brains. Next week's gonna be the last video of the year. Who knows what we're gonna do, but it'll be good. Thank you so much for joining us.